everybody, this is Bud and in this video we will configure what's called um, systemd path units. Uh, we are using our desktop systemd session thing here, but this is something that is useful no matter what kind of setup you have. It, it applies to GNOME, KDE, Wayland, I don't know. As long as you have systemd installed, this is something that you can uh, make use of, definitely. And I'm sorry here, I need to use this status bar, otherwise we could get this full screen, but I really need to see the, 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 uh, this thing, <laughs> if the host or, or, or the guest uh, machine has focus, so to speak, or keyboard focus, whatever. Let's open leafpad and let's open a terminal. Um, so what we can use this, um, path units for is uh, for example reload i3 when uh, we make changes to the configuration file and, and just do that automatically it's extremely nice to have this set up actually so let's open the i3 configuration file here and what i mean is let's say we make a change here we change the font size to 20. i save this document now for these changes to to have effect i need to do i3 message reload and there, now we see the font is 20. It's a bit annoying, so let's bring it back to 10 or set it to 10. I think the default is 8 actually, but 10 is good. Um, but we have to do this, we have to manually reload it. Or there is a key binding, I think, Super Shift C, I think it is by default in, in i3 to, to do this to reload the configuration. But we can set it up to automatically just do this when we make changes. Um, by using systemd units here. So let's create a new unit. And I think I also want to just show this in a tab layout. So it's less noisy. Uh, let's create a unit here, a description. Now we just create a simple unit uh, that will uh, reload i3. Um, a service unit, exec start. And here we simply use that i3 message reload command. Uh, another thing I would like to do here is to also bring up a notification whenever this happens. You will see why this is useful. Notify send reloaded i3. Save that in our systemd configuration and I'd like to save them like this. Reload i3.service. Now we can, before anything else, make sure that this uh, is working. So system CTL user start reload i3.service. Doesn't work. There is something wrong. Uh, it is actually a faulty unit file here. Not sure if you can spot it. Uh, it also tells us view the logs and the status of the service to see the details and if we view the status we will actually get the answer to the problem um, the service has more than one exec start setting which is only allowed for type one shot services refusing so it refuses to start this service because we have multiple exec starts you're only allowed to have one you're, you're supposed to configure them like we are doing here with yeah xfc for panel here for example we just have one single command that is the main command it's also this is also important to, to understand that this is a different command you know xfc for panel that is a continuously running command when we terminate this command it also terminates the panel you know but uh, our reload unit here this command i3 message reload that is not a daemon command it's it's just a, a simple thing that that does its thing uh, and then it's done. It's not a demon running in the background. Um, annoying here that I have to open. Yeah, but it is this one. Um, this is not valid. We also saw that which is only allowed for type one shot. I think we can talk a little bit more about this later. So now I, I will simply do this. I will make this a one shot type service and you will see that it will magically work now. So system CTL user status, no, start reload i3 service. 
And now it actually reloaded and we got the notification. Uh, this is why I want this notification. One reason for it is that we actually see that it did reload here. Uh, but what we have created now is just a really stupid way of doing i3 message reload because they, that is really all this uh, service does. Um, but now we will create a companion uh, unit here. Unit description watch i3 config for changes or something like that is a good description I guess. Uh, this is not a service unit, it's a path unit. So we add the path section and then we add the option path modified and we specify the path to the uh, yeah, file we want to watch for changes here. So home.config i3 config, that is the full path to the i3 configuration. I save this. And here, this is important, we get back to why, but save it with the same name, so reload i3 service, but now we save it as reload i3 path, dot path, very important. Save that, um, and then we try to start this uh, unit, so start reload i3 dot path. Same thing, something is wrong in the unit file. Look at the status. Refusing, ignoring, uh, path is not absolute, um, but this is an absolute path. Home directory dot config i3 slash config. The problem here is that system D doesn't expand the tilde. You know, the real path of a tilde expands to our home directory, but this system D doesn't do that. Um, so one solution here quick fix for this is to just write the full path then home bud uh, try it now start reload i3 path no errors okay let's try it let's make a change here to the i3 config uh, set it to 20 yeah we can already see the notification but now i change to 20 i press or we can even do it from the menu to make it dramatic save boink 20. It automatically reloads immediately when you save the document. Uh, one thing that is a bit annoying here is that s for some reason when you use leafpad specifically you will see we get the notification when I just simply enter a new line here. I have not saved the document yet but it still re uh, triggers this reloader. Not sure why it does this because it doesn't do that with other text editors. Um, I can just quickly bring up Sublime. Uh, to show you how it usually works. So here we have Sublime with the same file open. Uh, we can even close it and open it. You see, we don't get the notification. We can modify the document, but as soon as I save, we get the notification. And this is really what you want. And that is usually how it works. It's just no uh, leaf pad that is a bit uh, weird about this. Uh, but uh, it also doesn't really matter that it will trigger that i3 message reload when you because you kind of want to reload here anyways i guess if you start editing the file so it will be there will be two reloads but this now you see also why it's useful to get that notification to hmm something is going on here uh, you know it doesn't really matter now but just uh, as a side note and we will continue using leafpad because i feel like doing that We'll also set it to font size 10. Um, before we do this, I need to do this, otherwise I will probably forget it. Uh, this was a quick fix for the issue that system D doesn't whoops, support tilde. We can write the full path, but you can also do this. Percentage H, that is basically a tilde in system D. Uh, it will expand to the um, user's home directory. Why it does this I'm not really sure but that's uh, how it is. Uh, so this will also work. Uh, we now, if we try to start it, or it is started I guess, we stop, start it again, yeah, no errors and it works. So percentage H is 
what you replace tilde with when you are working with systemd. Um, now um, all we need to do here um, in our configuration is um, add this to our i3 service which is the main uh, desktop service here it starts uh, the main uh, program is i3 the window manager but it also starts the bar and tuner daemon and stuff like that here we can also add wants i3 no reload i3.path and that will automatically start that uh, uh, file watcher service when we log in basically uh, we should also add part of graphical session target to our uh, path unit here so i lost it again reload i3 path we add part of graphical session target to to the unit section and that means that when we stop the i3 unit it will also stop this one because we have set it up like that um, this of course only works um, is this how we do it then there system the i3 service no, nice, I get <laughs> new tabs. Uh, this only works because we uh, we have this setup, as I mentioned here. But if you want to use this um, and not use our nonsense uh, systemd thing here, starting the window manager and the XFC4 panel with systemd, maybe you don't even use these programs, but you still want to set something like this up, uh, you can do this. Um, add an install section to the unit and then you say wanted by and then you specify a target a good target for this is graphical session target save that we go to our terminal and then we stop this first and foremost reload i3 path yeah now we got this guy also uh, we have to uh, i mentioned that in the last video that every time you make changes uh, or most of the time at least when you make changes to these files it often prompts you that you need to do systemctl user daemon reload to make sure that the changes uh, have effect uh, this is the next thing i would like to set up here uh, is to automatically reload system uh, the daemon uh, whenever we make these changes we can do that in a almost identical way as with the i3 here but before we do that let's look at this uh, system user status reload i3 path it's loaded disabled inactive uh, when we added this install section that means that now we are we can actually enable this uh, unit instead of what we have done up until this mo moment um, starting them by adding them to our i3 service uh, by using systemctl user enable and then the unit you see now it prompts us here that it have created some sim link we can see this uh, for open thunar and then we can navigate to our systemd uh, directory home config systemd user here you can see it have automatically created a directory with a sim link to our unit there this was done when we did enable and what this means is that when uh, uh, systemd starts and it finds one of these uh, directories in, in the configuration um, directory like this that have the name of a target dot wants that means that it will when it starts this target it will also try to start all of the units uh, that are symlink there uh, which in turn means that when we log in now uh, it will automatically do this because graphical session target is uh, the target that will automatically get started when you start a graphical session obviously so this is how you would set it up uh, that is what i really want to say here if you are not using our uh, um, way of configuring this uh, by adding wants uh, in a main file like this it also um, kind of highlights here the, the drawback and the advantage of our method 
when you're doing what we are doing here with the with main service file, we will configure everything from this, you know, what we want to start and, and so on, and the dependencies and stuff like that from this file. Um, and we always use, it, it, it's like a file-based configuration, while this method is more of a command line based configuration. So you enable and disable stuff that you want to automatically start. And that is how most people normally use system D, you know, and the advantage of that is that you don't have to mess with configuration files. The disadvantage is that everything has to be done from the command line. And that is also kind of inconvenient, especially when you do lots of, of changes to them, which uh, we kind of do, especially when we set them up now. Um, so, but hopefully I covered there how this works. Um, I will disable this now because we don't use it, but if you're not using our uh, method, then that is how you do it. The, the important thing is that you must add the install section and you have to name a target in the wanted by like this. If you don't add the install section, you will not be able to enable them. Uh, Systemctl will prompt you that you need to. This needs to be part of, of the unit file. We can keep this in here, even if we we don't use it now. It doesn't hurt that this only applies when you actually use those enable uh, uh, um, verbs with Systemctl. All right. Um, one thing I would like to do here before we continue is. Um, disabling the stupid i3 bar because it's just annoying when we already have a xfce bar so let's um, ah, i guess we should also start start it again here now uh, start reload i3 path then in the i3 config we uh, disable the bar simply by commenting it out and save it did reload here, we got the notification, but it actually didn't re um, remove the bar. Might look like it's not working, but that is, this is a corner case in this, uh, for this specific specific thing here, that to disable the bar like that, you either have to log in and log out, uh, or you have to do i3 message restart. And you see how the screen flickers and stuff like that when we do that. Um, it's a much more brutal uh, restart command than reload is. Reload simply reloads the configuration and looks for new changes, applies them if there are any. Restart actually restarts the i3 process in place. And when you do that, it will remove the bar. Um, it might look like, like it's better to use restart then than reload because restart always work in quotation mark but restart is as we could see more brutal and can actually cause some issues when you use this uh, now we have a simple layout with just a single tabbed container but uh, it can actually mess up the layout when you do this restart and you lose all your marks and it uh, I don't recommend you ever use this actually. It's only the only use case for it is when you want to enable and disable the bar like this. Um, just as a quick side note, but now um, we don't have a bar. Maybe we should just log in and log out to make sure that everything is working. Let's do that. Why not? Why not? And then we set up the systemd uh, daemon reload uh, path unit. Now we don't have a bar. That's great. Let's uh, verify that the, that the i3 i3 file watcher is working by opening the i3 configuration file. And yeah, it seems to be working since we already got the notification. But change the font size to 14. It seems to be working. I think 10 is what I want to go with. So great. All right, let's do this for system D as well here. Um, so this will more or less be repetition here, but I think why not? Uh, after this, we can uh, look a bit at how to uh, learn more about this by some classic RTFM. But uh, we take this first. Uh, so unit description um, reload system the daemon service 
and again here we now we know that we should use type one shot one word exec start uh, system ctl user daemon reload and let's also bring up a notification here so exec start notify send reloaded system d daemon like that save that in our system the user configuration as uh, reload system d dot service and we create the companion path unit A new unit description watch system d config for changes or something like that path path modified and now we know that we use percentage h to reference the home directory dot config system d user one thing that's different here from the i3 uh, unit now is that uh, we want to watch all of the files in the system d user directory here and you don't have to do anything special for that it it, it will it will do that if you specify a directory. I like to add a trailing slash when I am um, specifying a directory, but that is also not needed here. So this should work. Uh, save that as uh, reload systemd.path. Save and a terminal systemctl user start reload systemd.path. If this is working now, it should bring up notifications whenever I do changes here and we do get changes and it's, th this means it automatically reloads the systemd daemon for us. That's, that's great. Um, and that's also how easy it is to, to set these up really. Uh, let's also, so I don't forget it, add it to the main service here. Reload system. D, but I understand if you think, sure, it isn't that difficult to set it up, but it is really uh, awkward, you know, that you have to create two files, <laughs> like one service file and one path file. And I have like four or five of these uh, set up in my own configuration. Uh, just to mention them, like Dunst, you could set it up for that as well. I guess we should also talk a bit about that. but. For dance notification configuration, you could set it up. You could set it up for X resources. You could set it up for, yeah, whatever. Uh, and you will end up with, say, say you have four of these. That means you have eight files. It's, it's kind of annoying that you have that it, so many files. But on the other hand, it's also very much a set and forget kind of thing. At least that's what you should aim for. Like the i3 configuration it will not change like the file path you will never have to modify the service file really and same thing with the systemd configuration here it's a set and forget thing uh, and but i do agree that it is annoying that you have to create two uh, of these uh, files every time it would be uh, maybe uh, desirable to have it set up something like here we have the i3.path you specify the path and then why not have it here you know xx start i3 message uh, reload Th this would in one way make sense and i don't think anyone would complain but now it is how it is and there are also like benefits to to the way it is set up here that they they because sometimes there are actually, and I actually do this specifically for the i3 uh, service. Sometimes you just want to start that service alone, like reload the i3 service, and you want to do it with systemd. There are use cases for that. And you can also set up dependencies, you know, in, in the reload i3 service. In one way, it does have a dependency on i3 itself, of course. So it doesn't hurt for us here to do i wants i3.service, for example because we cannot reload i3 if it's not started. Um, that is how these things work. Um, I have not mentioned it uh, really, but uh, those notify send, it might not work for you. 
make sure that this command is available like notify send if this say command not found or something like that you probably need to install lib notify is usually the name of the package to do that uh, my notifications are created by Dunst, so I have also installed that. But um, sometimes you might already have a notification daemon installed without knowing it. If you get a notification, that's good. But I like Dunst. Um, maybe this is unnecessary to show, but uh, you can do this, I think. Uh, let's open the i3 service. Not sure why I'm doing this now because I'm not really sure. Uh, let's do a system CTL user list unit files and look at the sockets. No, it's not here. Yeah, whatever. Then we don't. Maybe the system. Then I, I'm not sure. I think there is a dunced socket. See, now we are listing all units, not just user units, and you can see how many there are. Uh, no, there is no danced socket here. So let's let's uh, just ignore this. Why am I doing it even? 362 unit files listed. System D is massive. Uh, another way to see how massive System D is is to look at the man page collection. Uh, do you want to show all 178 uh, available man pages? Sure. Um, and I want to, to, to talk a bit about this uh, because now we just quickly skimmed over a bunch of things there. For example, that one shot uh, type, what was that really? We set that up in our service uh, units, in our service files, and this is one easy way to remember or know where to look is that dot service that means this is related to the dot service file type kind of so systemd dot service if we open this this is a good one of the good man pages here important um, i recommend reading the description here and here we can see the first option to to the service units here it also tells us that service units may include a unit section and install section we have looked at both of those but it must include a service section uh, and in the service sections these are the available option that will be listed here the first one listed is actually the type uh, option so one shot then it explains here how that actually works i really recommend reading these uh, if you don't specify a type, you will probably use it's simple, which is the default. And here it explains how that works. Exec is a similar one, and it's, it is kind of useful to know the difference about this. Even forking, not bad to know that that exists and how it works here. Um, then it goes on here to list the rest of the available options. And as you can see, there is a lot of stuff you can set up here with, with uh, service units. Uh, this section I also highly recommend reading command lines. It's it's kind of important to understand that uh, the syntax is inspired by shell syntax. Okay, that's that's good, but it's not exactly the shell. These are not supported. For example, redirection here is not supported. More specifically, pipe is not supported. And what that, this really means here is when we do exec start here. For example, this is a command that we execute just as on the shell, in the shell, in a terminal. But we cannot use pipes uh, when we do this exec start and exec stop and so on. Uh, it's important to understand that that is the case. And we could also see another um, example of this was uh, the tilde, you know, it doesn't support tilde. So there are differences from the shell. Um, even if this is not an exec command, but there are difference, uh, differences like this. You can also use an, uh, variables in the exec commands. That's fine, as long as those variables are available in the environment. Um, this is a bit confusing here, the environment, um, because the environment, when systemd is talking about the environment like this, it means 
the environment is available to the commands that you execute. The, the environment doesn't apply to systemd itself. Um, and the best uh, uh, example of this is what they are writing here. This is an important section. It is a bit weird maybe, but uh, if a command is not a full absolute path, it will be resolved to a full path using a fixed search path determined at compilation time. For example, uh, we can open any of these xfc for panel we just say xfc for panel we don't say the full path here which would be uh, user bin xfc for panel we don't need to do that and that feels good right that we don't have to do that be um, and system d will um, figure out where to find that because it have its path set up but system d's path is can be different it is most likely different from the system's path and definitely from the uh, user path because it is hard coded to uh, a list of search paths here and it also depends if you're starting it with with uh, pseudo privileges or not uh, uh, this s bin is only available if if, if you are um, yeah a super user so otherwise you only have user local bin, user bin and bin and this is hard coded into system D. Uh, you cannot like start system D with an environment to modify the path. It doesn't care about that. But this is only for system D itself. So it's only like for finding this command. The command on the other hand is aware of the environment. So that is aware of the path uh, that was used when when this was started and here you can also see how this is related to how we started systemd here with our init script we needed to import make sure that we import the environment and stuff like that um, it is a bit much maybe to take in here and it is not really related but but i just wanted to really highlight that since we already have when we have the man page open here uh, you can also see there are lots of examples in the man pages, which are always a great way to, to learn how, how things work. Um, we also have been working with path um, files. So uh, man systemd dot path will show you the, the, yeah, the man page for that. And this, this one is short. It's just 80 lines or something here. Uh, here we can see the different options we have here. We have used uh, path uh, modified, but you also have path changed and path exist, directory not empty. So there are different types of events you can specify. And you can also uh, add any number of these to the path units. So you can have multiple files and listen for, for events and stuff like that. Um, I just want to show you where, where you can find information about this. Uh, the last man, man page here is I want to highlight is dot unit, which is like a, the main page for all units. We can see here in the synopsis, it lists all the different units. So service units, socket units, device, mount, auto mount, swap, target, path, timer, slice, scope. Um, and all of them have individual man pages as well. But here you can find, um, as you can see, it's massive, but there are like information about these uh, percentage H variables and stuff like that. I think you, you find in this man page. Um, and here we can see the section options is also one of the most useful sections. You know, we have used description and wants how that works here is described. If we scroll down a bit, you can see requires. It's a similar option to wants, but declares a stronger requirement de dependency. It's good to know difference about these two um, and how they work and so on. Here we have part of is something we have used. And this is how you should use this uh, documentation. You use it as a reference. What are the available options? And then you can look here and sometimes you just want to look up this specific option, what is available here, blah, blah, blah. You cannot read all of these man pages in one in one sitting, so to speak. Of course not. It's 180 of them and some of them are thousand lines long. So uh, it will both take a long time and you will just be extremely confused. Use it as a reference and 
use this dot the dot man pages are uh, usually what you want to start with especially when you are doing what we are doing now um, I think the documentation is great the systemd documentation is very good uh, well written it's easy to read it actually uh, and um, it's up to date and it covers everything but it is massive and this is Ironically, this is one of the reasons people don't like systemd. It's so massive. It's impossible to grasp and yeah, it is kind of difficult to grasp everything Immediately it will it, it takes time to grasp everything, but you don't need to grasp everything and With good documentation it is also possible to uh, incrementally learn this stuff uh, So I, I think it's good but I also think it's massive and I wanted to show you at least these three here, which is related to what we have been doing now. I think we end the video there. Hopefully you learned something about this. I, I really like these uh, path units uh, having the i3 config automatically reloaded and so on. That's that's just great functionality. I'm not sure what we will look into the next video, but I have more stuff to show you about my systemd configuration. Um, I say thank you to watch for watching. Uh, also welcome to all the new viewers. I saw I got a lot of new subscribers on the last video. Uh, I think I got a shout out from uh, the Linux cast. So <laughs> here's a shout out back to you, Matt. Thank you so much uh, and thank you for the great YouTube channel, really good uh, Linux YouTube channel. Um, see you in the next video everybody, bye!